In today's chess video, we look at some amazing opening tricks for black when we start with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop c4. This is the Italian game, which is probably the most common opening setup you will ever see. After this, we play bishop c5, and now white has a couple of options. He can play c3 and attack the center, or he can simply castle and safeguard his king. Another popular move is d3, defending the pawn and opening up this diagonal for the bishop. And this is what we want him to play because after that we have this tricky little move, pawn to f5. It's called the Lucchini Gambit. From here, white plays knight g5, preparing a fried liver type of attack, but we just push this pawn, cutting off the bishop and attacking the knight. He plays knight f7 as expected and starts celebrating because he's forking the queen and the rook. But hold on, we have this sneaky little queen h4. Now if he's not careful and takes the rook, then he can pack his bags and go home because queen f2 is simply game over. Therefore, he cannot take the rook. So if he wants to prevent this checkmate, then castling would seem the most obvious response. But after knight f6, our rook is now free to move, so white has to take it. We advance further and look at this. In just 8 moves, we have so many deadly attacks around the king. In fact, queen h2 is threatening a checkmate. So the best way to defend is to go for h3. But then we have this nasty knight taking on f2. This queen is under attack, so if he takes, we take back with our queen. If he goes to the corner, we push this pawn to open up the king. He can capture in two ways, but none of them work. His queen is helpless, it cannot take because we have queen g1 checkmate. And if he takes with the pawn, then we have d5, which not only attacks his bishop, but also activates our bishop. As you can see, we are just crushing it with all these mating tactics and there's no way he can save this game. Going back, let's look at another interesting line. So rook takes, queen takes, and now instead of moving to the corner, what if the king goes to h2? Well, then again, we have d5, bishop takes, and now comes the absolutely mind-blowing move, bishop to g4. Look, the queen is under attack and unfortunately it cannot leave the first rank because we still have this queen g1 checkmate. And if you're thinking of taking with the pawn, then believe it or not, queen h4 is another crushing checkmate. Okay, let's go back again. Now in this position, you might think, instead of taking with the rook, what if he simply moves his queen? Well, then just look at this beautiful line. Knight h3 double check, king h1 or h2 doesn't matter. Then again, knight f2 double check. King g1 is forced and finally, queen h1 is an absolutely stunning checkmate. On that note, my absolutely stunning audience, do show some love and hit the like button below. Alright, let's go back to this position. We have this checkmate threat and I just showed you how white is completely destroyed after castling. But what if we plays g3? Well, we have some traps here as well. First, let's save our queen. Now white is out of danger, so he'll take the rook. And again, we have the same idea. First push d5 and then bring out the bishop to attack the queen. If he blocks, we'll just ignore this threat and take the g-pawn. Bishop sacrifice and we simply push g2. This pawn is now unstoppable and the rook cannot escape. Even if it moves here, we simply take it with the bishop. And if the king moves out of the way and tries to run, we have all these different attacks so he won't survive long. Okay, now in this position, instead of blocking this threat, even if he moves his queen away, you can bring in your knight into action and we are ready to pounce on him from all directions. We have this royal folk lined up. Queen g2 is another option to invade white's king side. And of course, both these bishops can jump in any time to finish off the king. So basically, it's all over for white. Guys, I have some more tricks to show you for black and I have some interesting ideas for white as well. But before moving on, I would like to thank Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Guys, we use the internet for almost everything these days and we share a lot of our information online. So it's very important to protect our personal data and the only way to do so is by using a VPN service like Atlas VPN. This prevents internet trackers from spying on your location and your online activities. And it also blocks ads and prevents you from visiting harmful websites. Currently, Atlas VPN is offering a massive 83% discount and you can grab it from the link in the description. What I found really amazing is the data breach monitor, which tells me exactly when and where my information has been leaked, so I can take some immediate action like changing my passwords. With more than 6 million users worldwide, Atlas VPN is available on Android, iPhone, Mac and Windows, and you can use it on unlimited devices with just one single subscription. Even if you're traveling, you can easily access your favorite content from anywhere in the world. Right now, Atlas VPN is offering a huge discount where you can get a 3-year subscription for just $1.83 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So guys, just click the link in the description and get Atlas VPN right now. 
Okay, let's first recap what we've learned so far. So after the Italian opening, we play bishop c5 and then f5. We've seen seven match winning traps where white tries to attack with his knight. The main ideas you need to keep in mind are to push f4, attack with your queen, get this knight out, play d5, activate this light squared bishop, and if required, bring in this knight as well. Now these traps can be used when he gets his knight to f7. What if after f4, he gives a check with the bishop? Well, then we'll play king f8. This knight is still in danger. He can't move it because then he simply loses his bishop. And if he decides to exchange, you won't take the bishop. Instead, just capture his knight and after the bishop runs away, you just destroy his king side. The engine gives almost a four point advantage to black here. Anyway, in this position, a more logical response from white would be to defend the knight with something like queen h5 or even h4. If queen h5, then you can push him back this way and then slowly develop your pieces. And if he defends with h4, you attack the knight again. And after the dust settles, you end up with an extra pawn. Of course, you cannot castle, but you're much better developed with all these attacking options. The engine gives black a two and a half point advantage. All right, let's go back. Now here, some of you might be wondering, what if he does not make any of these moves and simply accepts this gambit? In that case, you'll first grab the center and at some point you will pick up this pawn as well. Anyway, now the bishop is under attack. So moving it to b5 seems most logical because it pins our knight and therefore he threatens to take this pawn. But you have a clever idea here as well. Instead of saving this pawn, you look to castle as soon as possible. Therefore, knight e7, white captures and then short castle. Now, after castling, we've unpinned our knight, so white's got to do something. Most likely, he'll take with the knight and we'll recapture with the pawn. He needs to save his bishop, so he goes back. And now again, you have a brilliant tactical idea. Can you find it? Look, we've already castled and all our pieces are ready to advance. On the other hand, white has zero development. So what do we do? Well, we'll sack our bishop and expose the king. White has to take and finally we pick up this pawn. From here, the main idea is to get your queen out quickly and advance with all these pieces to target the vulnerable king. Now, even though black is down in material, white is way behind in development and therefore the engine gives black a massive four and a half point advantage. After looking at all these deadly traps, you might ask, Jitendra, is there any way to even play this as white? Well, let's start from the beginning. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6 and bishop c4. Oh, by the way, there are different move orders to transpose into the Lucini Gambit. For example, here instead of bishop c5, you can straight away play f5. This is the Rousseau Gambit. Now, if he takes the pawn, you have e4 and this knight is forced to move again. Therefore, instead of taking the pawn, more often than not, white will defend with d3. And as you can see, we reach the very same position as the Lucini Gambit. Now, as white, when you see this opening, it looks like black has made some kind of a mistake. That's why you try to launch an early attack and you try to punish him immediately. But I feel the best approach for white is to just be patient. Instead of reacting to black's unusual moves, white should just castle and develop his pieces normally. And if white is playing that way, you should also do the same as black. Just simply activate all your minor pieces. Now as black, here comes a point where you want to castle, but because of this bishop, you're not able to. That's when you can play knight a5. This bishop has no squares left and even if he tries to exchange this knight, you have this c6 move and eventually this bishop will fall. According to Stockfish, this is dead equal at the moment. So even if white plays this perfectly, you still have a good chance of winning this as black. All right, so it's puzzle time. In this position, it is white's turn and you need to find the best move continuation for white. Do share your answers in the comment section below. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you in the next one.